Hey guys, Tez here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an insight as to why it takes your community pharmacist so long to get you your medications. So before we get started, don't forget to grab your cup of tea to have with Tez and let's jump right in. Recently, my friend went to her community pharmacist to get some medications and because she waited a whole eight minutes, from when she got to the pharmacy to when she left, she decided to ask me why it takes pharmacists so long. Because all you have to do is pick a drug from the shelf, put it in a bag, how long could that take? I realised that there's a huge misconception about what pharmacists do behind that counter. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of an insight today, just so you know what it is that we have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to be going on a journey with the prescription today and hopefully by the end of it you'll have a little bit more information about why it takes so long. So when we receive a prescription, either by paper or electronically, there's a few things we have to do before we can start dispensing it. So usually the person who handles the prescription first is the dispenser and what they do is they check the name of the patient, address, age and date of birth. They also check the name, address and particulars of the prescriber. So when I say particulars, I mean their registration number, whether it's with the GMC, the NMC or the GPHC. We also need to make sure that we're checking the date because prescriptions do have expiry dates. This is usually six months for normal prescriptions and 28 days for controlled drugs such as morphine. So before the dispenser actually dispenses it, they then need to check what's actually on the prescription, whether that's a medication or device. So if it's a medication, then they need to check the name of the medication, the strength, the formulation, whether it's a tablet or a liquid, um, the dosage, whether it's take one twice daily, take one daily, and the quantity, whether that's 10, 12, or 24. So if they're happy with all those things, they then label the prescription so that we get labels that say take one daily, take two daily, etc. So after they've labelled up the prescription, they then need to pick the items on the prescription. Now this is where the real drama and conundrum starts. Medicines come in all shapes and sizes and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming, especially for new members of staff to dispense medications. In terms of some of the solid medications that we receive, some come in capsules and some come as tablets. So you need to make sure that you're selecting the correct medication because you do not want to give a patient tablets when they're used to capsules or vice versa. So when you've identified the correct medication you have, let's say digoxin, you then need to make sure you're picking the correct strength. Now some manufacturers are very helpful and they will change the tiniest little bit of the box so that you know it's a different formulation or strength. Strength. So for example, digoxin comes as 250, 125 and 62.5. So you have to make sure that you're picking the correct box and the correct number of boxes to fulfill your prescription. We do have some patients who are very particular about a specific type of brand that they get. Um, there's no evidence based to some of these choices. It's just they feel that one type of medicine or one colour of medicine may work better than the other. So you need to make sure that if there's any annotations for that patient, you're fulfilling them. Because the worst thing you can do is give a patient an almost brand when they like a cord because they won't take it, they'll bring it back to the pharmacy and you have to get another script. So let's say you're used to a specific type of medication looking a specific way because you pick that same medication every day and because we're creatures of habits as humans you then get used to it. What the manufacturers do to just add a little bit of spice, a little seasoning, is they give you different medications that all look very similar. As you can see here we have amlodipine, bisoprolol and pregabalin and they all look very similar. Now these medications have very different indications and giving a patient amlodipine instead of pregabalin or vice versa could have really bad adverse effects on the patient so you need to make sure you're being extra careful when you're picking the correct medicine. So I wish this stopped at the solids, but unfortunately it escalates over all the way to inhalers. Like for example, when you look at this Soprabec, the different strengths look very similar and in a high pressure situation or where you're running behind because people are complaining about how long it's taken can add a bit of pressure and you might miss the subtle hint of difference in colour and pick the wrong thing. In case that wasn't stressful enough, that then spills over to the creams. So for example, we have Betamethasone, which comes under different brands, and it also comes as a cream or ointment, and you have to make sure that you're picking the right thing, all of which can add stress and pressure, especially if the pharmacy is already very busy. 
Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, there's a lot of money to be made in medicines. So there are different companies that are making the same thing, but they have their own brands, which means that something as simple as isosol by the mononitrate can you leave you with all these options and not knowing which one to pick. So let's say you've managed to go through all that and pick the correct items. Bearing in mind, not every single script that we receive in the pharmacy only has one item. I have checked recently a prescription that had 24 items. So you've done all that and this is just a dispenser. And then next they have to attach the labels to the correct boxes. Now some boxes come as boxes of 28 or boxes of 56 or boxes of 30. Now depending on what the prescriber chooses, you have to make sure that the quantity in that box matches the quantity on the label and on the script. So if a patient needed let's say 12 amlodipines and you have a box of 28, you then need to take 28 out of that box, find a clear box, put them in that clear box, attach the label and also make sure you attach a patient information leaflet inside the label as per the rules. So all of these things are happening while somebody's waiting. Now that the dispenser is done with their job, they then take all those medicines and the prescription and they put them in a tray ready for the pharmacist or in some cases the accuracy checking technician to have a look at. Now this is when I usually step in. So I have to follow the same steps in terms of checking for the patient's name, age, date of birth and address, check the prescriber in terms of the address, particulars and name and also checking the date to make sure that the prescription is still valid. On top of then checking the medications by checking the medicine that's been selected, the label that's been generated and the prescription, I also need to make sure that I'm clinically checking the prescription, which means that I need to make sure that the medicines being prescribed make sense. For example, if let's say the maximum you can take of amlodipine is 10 milligrams and I see a prescription for 30 milligrams, that is something I would not be able to give to the patient and I would have to query it with the prescriber to ensure that they meant to prescribe it that way and if not, get the prescription changed so you're doing all of that on top of all the other checks that have already been done by the other person after that I then bag all the medicines ensuring that I attach a label which includes the patient's particulars and I have to make sure that I'm bagging all the items on the script if we don't have enough of any ensuring that we generate an owing slip so the patient can come back and making sure that I don't add things that might be laying around the checking area but don't belong to that patient. You obviously need some degree of concentration while you're doing all this but unfortunately that's not always awarded to you so you might have other patients waiting and patients complaining that they've been waiting for so long. You might have patients who come into the pharmacy to speak to a pharmacist and they're waiting for you. You might have the phone ringing because another patient wants to speak to the pharmacist. You might have a dispenser or a checking technician asking you for advice or questions. You have to keep your ear out listening for whoever selling medications over the counter to ensure that you're happy with that consultation. You might then also get a patient who has their methadone coming to the pharmacy ready to collect. All this is happening whilst you check prescriptions so you need to make sure that you're concentrating because if you don't and you send out the wrong medication to a patient it could result in that patient maybe having to go into hospital or even worse dying from your mistake. So the stakes are quite high. It really baffles me that people will go to a mediocre restaurant, order mediocre food and wait over 45 minutes before they get their starters. But they can't wait 10 to 15 minutes for medicines that might potentially prolong or change their life for the better. But yeah, that is pretty much what happens when you order a prescription. It's not just picking a box off the shelf and putting it in a bag. There's a little bit more that happens behind the scenes. So next time when you're at your local pharmacy or local drugstore and you order some medicines, please be gentle and please be kind to us because we are going through a lot and we are trying our best to make sure that we give you medicines that are safe for you. I sound like an advert. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or video suggestions. Don't forget to tap that like button so the video reaches more people. Subscribe if you haven't already because it really helps me out. And until next time, bye for now.